Ben Graham was a truly formidable mind, and he also had a clarity in, in writing. And we've talked over and over again about the power of a few simple ideas thoroughly assimilated. And, uh, and that happened with, with Graham's ideas, which came to me indirectly uh, through Warren, but also some directly from Graham. The interesting thing for me is to watch Buffett, the former protege. And by the way, Buffett was the best student Graham had in 30 years of teaching at Columbia. And, uh, but what happened, uh, and since I knew both men, was that Buffett became way better than Graham. That is a natural outcome. It's, it's what Newton said. He said, if I've seen a little farther than other men, it's by standing on the shoulder of giants. And uh, uh, so Warren may have stood on Ben's shoulders, but he ended up seeing, seeing farther. And no doubt somebody will come along in due course and do a lot better than we have. I enjoyed making money more than Ben. I mean, it, it, candidly, I, it, with Ben, it, it just, it, it really was incidental, at least it, by the time I knew him. It may have been different when he was younger, but it just didn't, it, the process didn't, enjoy, of, of the whole game did not interest him more than a dozen other things may have interested him. With me, I just find it interesting. And, and, uh, and therefore, you know, I've spent, I've spent way more, a way higher percentage of my time thinking about investing and thinking about businesses. I, I probably thought way more about businesses than Ben ever did. It, it, he had he had other things that in, interested him. So I've pursued the game a little, uh, quite a bit differently uh, than he did. And therefore, uh, measuring the record is really the two records are not. It's not a proper measurement. I mean, he he was he was uh, he was doing victory laps while I still thought I was out there running against, you know, the whole field. But well, Graham had some uh, blind spots, uh, partly of sort of an ethical, professorial nature. He was looking for things to teach that would work for every man, that any intelligent layman could learn and do well. Well, if that's the limitation of what you're looking for, there'll be a lot of reality you won't go into because it's too hard to figure out and too hard to explain. Buffett, if there was money in it, uh, had no such restriction. <laughs> yeah, ben, ben sort of thought it was cheating if we went out and talked to the management because he just, he just felt that the person who read his book, you know, living in Pocatello, Idaho, could not go out and meet the management. So he, he didn't, he, 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 and we didn't do it. I mean, when I worked for Graham, though, and it, it, I don't think I ever visited a management in, in the 21 months I was there. He just, but, you know, he, he wasn't sure whether it'd be useful Anyway, but if it was be useful, you know that that meant that his book was not uh, all that was needed. That you had to add something to it. I I found it fun to go out and, and and talk about their businesses with people or to check with competitors or suppliers or customers and all that. But uh, Ben didn't Ben didn't think there was anything wrong with that. He just he just felt that if if you had to do that, then his book was not the complete answer. And uh, uh, he didn't really want to do anything that the reader of his book couldn't do if he was on a desert island, you know, basically with just one line to a broker. <laughs> but if you stop to think about it, uh, Graham was trying to play the game of Ken the donkey wearing very dark glasses, and Warren, of course, would use the biggest searchlight he could find. 